In the second half of that game against the Rutgers Scarlet Knights, this Michigan Wolverines team started to look really good. They really started to hit their stride. But can they keep it going against this great Nebraska defense? From L.A. to Piscataway, all Big Ten, all year long. This is Big Ten Ten. I know it sounds a little bit weird considering where this Cornhuskers defense was last year, but I don't think there's any doubt about it. This is a great Cornhuskers defense so far. Very interested to see how they're going to match up uh, against Michigan and the prowess and the talent that they have on offense, but you know we're going to get into that. Nebraska, out of all the teams in the FBS, they have allowed the least amount of rushing yards. That's right. They are the top rush defense in the Big Ten, and you know they're going to be tested <laughs> against what Michigan wants to do. We know they want to run the football. And kind of sticking with that point, Michigan is going to be tested as well. I think this is the, be, going to be the biggest test for Michigan in terms of their offense facing a defense. I know Rutgers gave them some pushback. They gave them some challenges last week, but I believe Nebraska is a little bit of a notch up. You know, the, what Nebraska and Rutgers, I think those are just two examples. They show the depth of defense within the Big Ten. Everybody talks about Ohio State and Penn State and Michigan in terms of these great defenses. Iowa, you can throw in there as well, but you're going to look at the Cornhuskers and, and Rutgers probably at some points during the season and say they're going to be sixth. They're going to be going to be sevens in some of these categories. They might be middle of the road defenses, but they're still really, really good defenses. It just shows how deep uh, the Big Ten is on the defensive side of the ball. Tony White has done a tremendous job, right? I think the most impressive part when I look at Nebraska, right? When you bring in a new coordinator, you kind of switch and schemes up a little bit, kind of go into a three-three-five type of look. I think the most impressive part for me is that Tony White is doing this with a lot of the same personnel that you saw under Eric Shenander and Bill Bush like last season when they were towards the bottom of the Big Ten in a lot of categories, right? You look at the secondary, you see a lot of very familiar names. You look at linebacker, you still see Nick Henrich back there. You still see Luke Reimer back there, defensive line. You still see Ty Robinson. There's familiar faces and familiar names still on this Nebraska defense, but it has, it is so much better. It's probably the most improved unit so far um, in the big 10 conference. So we've got Michigan's got a little bit of a challenge on their hands. They cleared some hurdles that Rutgers presented them last week, but can they do it against Nebraska? Let's dive into it um, here just a little bit. Michigan right now, 49th in the country in rushing offense, sixth in the big 10 right now. Let's get that running game going. Let's show them what Michigan football is all about. That's, I think, what I want to see in this game. Jim Harbaugh is not afraid of anything. He's going to go face-to-face -face with the T-Rex. He's going to hike up his khaki pants. He's, I'm, gonna, I'm not going to be afraid. Look at my arms and look at yours. Now who's the winner? <laughs> you know, Jim Harbaugh always seems to find an advantage, right, it seems. But this is a Michigan team that I think is going to attack. They're going to go right at Nebraska. Okay, I'm going to get to their game against Colorado and how that could maybe be used as a blueprint of sorts. So Michigan, you got to be able to run the football because what Michigan wants to do, their run game really opens up the great talent of J.J. McCarthy through the air. And this is a Nebraska pass defense. As good as their rush defense is, their pass numbers maybe aren't that great. 101st in the country against the pass right now. Um, they're 12th out of 14 in passing defense in the Big Ten. So one little caveat, maybe an asterisk to kind of talk about and kind of put behind that as well. 393 out of their 1,007 yards that they've given up this season came against Colorado, right? In that game where Shitter Sanders really started to carve him up in the second half. Okay, that was a Nebraska defense. That was worn down. They were on the field for a long time. This was an offense of Nebraska that didn't do them any favors by turning the football over three and outs and not moving the football. They were gassed. They were tired. They were running on E. And Colorado took advantage of it. Now, why can't Michigan do that? Why can't Michigan use that run game to grind out long drives, keep Nebraska on the field for a long period of time? Because if you're Michigan, you got to look at the other side of the ball. You look at what Nebraska has on offense, and you said, we got big-time matchups. Wolverine defense 
against what the Huskers have on offense, that's a big time advantage. If our defense can take care of business, get them off the field a lot, we can grind down and wear down this Nebraska defense. And you could maybe see kind of very pretty, you know, I know Michigan and Colorado, very different teams on the offensive side of the ball, but you could maybe see something in the same ballpark as that where maybe Nebraska holds strong and they look good. Maybe it's a one possession game in the first half, but Michigan eventually pulls away in the second half. Michigan has superior talent, I think, in most positions against the Nebraska Cornhuskers uh, in this game. Let's talk about the trenches. The trenches, uh, right, we know how Matt Rule wants to be in the trenches. He wants this Nebraska team to be physical. He wants them to be a lot like Michigan. He said as much in his press conference this week. The blueprint that Michigan has laid the foundation, that's the type of foundation that he wants to lay for the Big Red in Lincoln, Nebraska. So when you talk about the trenches, Nebraska has done really well in their pass rush. 14 sacks this season that leads the conference. Michigan has allowed only three sacks. Now, there have been some, you know, Michigan has set such a high bar on the offensive line. Back-to-back Joe Moore Award winners. Some people have nitpicked some things. Well, there's this about the offensive line. There's that. And is it a Joe Moore Award winning O-line? That remains to be seen. But this is still a really good offensive line in terms of pass protection. And they are going, I think this Michigan O-line and pass pro is going to be challenged. The Huskers do it from many different angles. Remember that 3-3-5. Remember those numbers. Because those were the same numbers that gave Michigan some problems in the national semifinal. TCU approached them with a 3-3-5 system. Don't, don't forget about that. For Nebraska, eight players have at least one sack. Four players have at least two sacks. You're looking at Jamari Butler, Cameron Lenhart. And then the linebackers, Nick Henrich and Luke Reimer. So they're going to attack you from multiple different angles and with multiple different guys can get into the backfield. I want to see the tackles uh, do well in this one for the University of Michigan. I believe there is superior talent in the trenches for Michigan. But Nebraska needs that pass rush. They need to get the J.J. McCarthy to kind of get him off his game uh, just a little bit as well. Let's dive into the Nebraska Cornhuskers here. Of course, the big question is Jeff Sims or Heinrich Harburg. So here's kind of my take on this going in. Heinrich Harburg provides you with a unique look on offense, right? You see a lot of that old school option. Boy, Nebraska fans have to love what they're seeing right now. Great defense, option football kind of reminds you taking it back to the mid-19, mid to late 1990s, uh, doesn't it right now? I think Heinrich pro- provides something unique on offense, I think he provides something that at times could maybe confuse defenses with some read type of situations you've seen. And Heinrich Harburg has been the most explosive thing that Nebraska has on offense. Those 60-yard runs, these 70-yard runs, yes, I get they've come against Northern Illinois and Louisiana Tech. But that's been your explosive offense all season long. Let's talk about Jeff Sims for a minute. We're not sure if he's going to play the injury. That's very much up in the air right now. But Jeff Sims, what, seven or eight turnovers the first two games. He's coming off an injury. His confidence was shot right after those two games. Heinrich Harbour goes in and he plays pretty solid football, pretty decent football, leading Nebraska to a couple of wins. So he's coming off where he hasn't played in two weeks. He's cold. His confidence probably isn't that great, right? These would have been two games for Jeff Sims, I think, for really to get his confidence back, but it didn't work out that way. Right now, I believe Heinrich Harburg gives you the best chance to win, gives you the best chance to play well against Michigan. He protects the football. You turn the football over against Michigan, you're going to get run out of the building. Heinrich Harburg in there, maybe you muck up the game a little bit, you put some pressure on J.J., maybe you force a turnover in the first half, and maybe you can hang around for a little bit. I think that's what Heinrich Harburg, and considering the lack of depth that now you have at running back with Ramir Johnson and Gabe Irvin Jr. out for the season, Heinrich Harburg is almost that second running back, right, in what he's shown so far this season. He's not much of a passing threat. Right now, we, we all know that. And this Nebraska defense is going to struggle to throw the football in Michigan. Michigan is, has superior talent 
in terms of matching up against Nebraska. The Huskers wide receivers have had a very difficult time separating so far. This is a pass game that is, uh, I hate to say bleak, but it looks kind of bleak right now in terms of throwing the football. That's maybe why you need to lean into the run game and Heinrich Harburg in what he really brings to this offense and, and try to make this what you can this season. I think maybe Thomas Vidoni, it might be your best uh, receiving threat at tight end um, here right now. Nebraska, I said it once, they, they need to muck up this game, maybe use the Rutgers formula. They need to strike early, need to get the crowd into it early in Lincoln, Nebraska, and see if they can capitalize on that. And maybe capitalize on some of these plays that Rutgers did not capitalize on. I thought we talk about the pass. And I think Gavin Wimsett is better than anything that Rutgers, Jeff Sims, or Heinrich Harburg is going to trot out there. But one thing I did notice in the past there for, for Gavin, when Michigan loaded up on the run game, there were things open. There were opportunities in the throw game throughout the first half and then early into the second half. Can Nebraska take advantage of those? I don't know. I think that's going to be a big question in this game. But this matchup for me really boils down to how good Michigan can look against a really, really good Nebraska defense. I want to hear your thoughts on this one. Can Nebraska stay in this game? Is it going to be Sims? Is it going to be Harburg? Leave your thoughts, all things Michigan and Nebraska, in the comments below. I'm Big Ten Ted. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching Big Ten Ted where it's all Big Ten all year long. Make sure to like the video to spread the word of Big Ten Ted to the masses and subscribe to the channel for updates on Big Ten content that drops every day.